Hello, everyone. Today we bring you a very special book trip after dark chat featuring USA Today and New York Times bestselling author Lexi Blake, one of the hottest erotic romance writers around. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Lexi. It's great to have you here. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Um, today, she'll be discussing her new novella, Adored, from the fabulous 1001 Dark Nights collection, which is set in the world of her Masters and Mercenaries series. Um, and we will also be giving away a bag of Lexi's favorite things, so enter to win on Book Trip after the chat. Don't miss that. It's going to be great. So um, before we begin answering the questions from your rabid fans, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about Adored? Um, Adored is set, I've got, I've got a, almost like, it's not two different worlds, they're two places in the same world. The, the bigger Masters and Mercenaries books are all about spies. They've got big plot lines, they've got mm -hmm. conspiracies and wild locations. Um, these novellas are what I like to call Sanctum Nights. So they're all set in the club, they're a lot more intimate. Um, they feature characters who aren't uh, <laughs> spending their weekends off shooting each other. This this one has a um, a lawyer and his paralegal, and I really like to deal in the novellas in what I like to call the the big tropes, the um, right you know, the plot lines that you use over and over and over again. You use them because there's great they're, they're great. They're, there's a reason they they come up again and again. And this one is what I like to call my secret baby book or unexpected baby book. So I, I really, that's one of my favorite. I like to deal, I can deal with family and um, like more intimate subjects in the novellas. Excellent. Um, now, before we went live, we were discussing RT a little bit. So, and it's been a big, you know, last week was the pub date for, for Adored. It was May 12th, right? And, uh, and then you went to RT. So can you tell us a little bit about just, you know, what that, that's like being there? Um, Archie is one great big party. Uh, it's, it's, it's really great. I, I'm glad it only happens once a year because I'm exhausted at, utterly at the end of it. But it's really, really nice to get out and meet, get to meet so many people who love the same thing I do. They love reading romance novels and you get to meet them and talk to them and have a drink or five or ten with them and sit with them on a party bus with a stripper pole. And anyway, what happens at RT stays at RT, so everybody should everybody should go at least once. Absolutely, the pictures look so funny, just amazing yes. on uh, social media. That's a stripper pole. <laughs> Um, so all the publishers have like set they all have different events and parties. I noticed like, you know. What was your favorite event there? Was there anything that stuck out in mind beside the stripper pole? I, I love, I loved the Shayla Black and I did a pre-party, a pre-RT um, party cool. bus. That was so much fun. Um, but That's I think awesome. my favorite uh, thing inside is I, I really love doing the Thousand and One Dark Knight Sparklers. Um, yeah. like, it's a really cool way to meet a lot of people really quickly. And to kind of get to know not just you, but also your other authors. Because I had a couple of authors who were like, I looked at your answers and was like, do I even know her? Because you get a, basically you get a questionnaire and you have to ask authors questions. And you ask all mm -hmm. the authors the same questions and see where they, they fall on. It's just really fun and, and a cool way to mingle. Excellent. Um, what other events are you going to be attending in the, in the coming months? Anything fun coming up? This year, um, the only thing I'm doing for the rest of the year, um, I'm doing RWA in New York in July, and I'll be at Authors in the OC in early October. So everybody, remember that, and I'm sure you'll be tweeting and Facebooking about Absolutely. it. So that's something something great coming up. Um, now, speaking of Shayla Black, I know that you've uh, collaborated with her in the past. What's that creative process like? We had to find our own creative process. I, I know a lot of people would, would, we tried just about everything. First of all, we start with a bottle of wine, and that helps, every, that really helps the creative process. Everything. So we start with a bottle of wine, we move on to another bottle of wine, and then we get started. Um, I know a lot of co-writers will write a chapter, and the other person will write a chapter. What we found really works best for us is plotting together, uh, doing a very, very comprehensive, we know everything that happens in this book plot, 
and then allowing the characters to screw all of that up and having to go back and replot, because that's what always happens. Right. Um, after we get through that process, I will write a very quick first draft, then she will take over, do an enormous amount of the editing, and uh, she usually adds in about twenty to 50,000 words. Interesting. That's kind, of, that's kind of our process. Cool. And how long did it take you guys to kind of like nail that down? Was it like a year, a couple months? How long months? did it take us to do one book? To like get that process down. Oh, oh. You know, that was probably that was probably a good six months from when we first had the germ of an idea to when we had got the book done. But I will say that if there's one thing my writing partner does well, it's she's very decisive. I would mm -hmm. sit around and go, oh, I guess that's not possible. And she just plows through. She is a very much wow. a driving force in, in getting those things done. So it's like the yin and yang. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> now, how about 1001 Dark Nights? Can you tell us how you got involved with that? Um, Liz Berry told me to get involved, so I did. <laughs> I, I met um, I met the very amazing creative force behind a Thousand One Dark Nights about five years ago, right at the beginning of my career. Um, she had read my first book. She ended up writing to me. I wrote back, and we formed this friendship. So when she was um, first beginning to have this idea to do this, she called me, and I was one of the people she asked to join, and I would follow her anywhere. So I said yes, and I'm really happy to do so. Awesome. Have you read any of the other work in A Thousand One Dark Nights? Oh, yes. Or some absolutely. of them. <laughs> absolutely. Do you have any, I, any, any favorites in there? Um, I loved Larissa Eons last year. I love everything Cherie Sinclair does. And I actually really have a um, place in my heart for Chris Rice's The Flame, <laughs> which was one of my favorite books of last year. It was just it's beautifully written. The Surrender Gate's lovely. Um, I think that mm -hmm. this is a, a nice way that people can kind of find new authors and, and get to know them. Now, um, in terms of, we're going to go back to Adored, um, what was your inspiration behind that? Um, how much of real life influences your books, if at all? Um, you know, Always, it's always there. The real life stuff is always there, but I would say it's more emotional than like plot driven. I, I think yeah. that a lot of the character quirks, the they come from real life. But obviously, I, yeah. I haven't been shot at lately. <laughs> Wood, wherever it is. You're fine. Um, I, I'm not a spy. I haven't. I don't go to a BDSM club every night. I've got three kids. Um, <laughs> But the, the core emotion, the insecurities mm -hmm. of the heroine, the, the quirkiness of the hero, those are all real. They come from someplace either within me or from someone I know. Yeah. I think that's where you um, find that truth of those characters is there. Yeah, I love the emotion that's portrayed in, in your stories, and you bring so much emotion to the whole dom sub relationships, and you shed a positive light on the entire BDSM scene, I think. So now that the erotica genre is, is getting more and more popular, how important is it to show like the deeper layers of BDSM? Well, I would say, I would say it, it was always, it was, and it continue, will continue to always be important. If it's just, mm -hmm. you know, there's a difference. I like to say what I write is erotic romance. That's not anything against erotica, yeah. but erotica in and of itself tends to be focused mainly on sex and Romance tends to be focused on the romance between two, two or sometimes three or four characters. Um, right. It's not necessarily the sex in an erotic romance is really important, and um, you can't, you couldn't take it out of and make it have it make sense. But it's not the actual journey itself. The journey is something that everybody takes. Um, I tend to use BDSM and more specifically DS relationships. Uh, as a metaphor for what we all need to do, because the tenant is communication. And I think yeah. we forget to do that too often. We forget to mm -hmm. say what we need, to ask for what we need. And as women, yeah. we also tend to play down our sexuality and play down 
what happens in the bedroom because we're too busy. And when we do that, we cut our partners off from one of the ways that they show they love us. So I, you know, sex is important and I like to talk about that in books. Yeah, that's awesome. Very important point. Um, Kate has a question. Okay. She says, what's the most common misconception about romance authors? Or erotica or oh you know. that I get I get a lot of people who walk up to my husband and they're like you must be the happiest man in the world and he's like no she, <laughs> she, she doesn't want to talk about sex at the end of the day she wants to just be alone she, um, <laughs> I think that a lot of people think we're sex craved maniacs some of us are I've met them um, I, I also think we get a lot of flack for not being intellectual uh, just yeah. because we're yeah. Just because we're emotional doesn't mean we're not smart. Exactly. Um, we have another question from Susan, which is interesting. She said, I read that you also wrote comic books. I did. And she says, do you have a favorite comic? Do you watch any of these shows that are based off comics like The Flash, iZombie, The Walking Dead, or Agents That's of S.H.I.E.L.D.? all of them. I really do. If you could see around my, you would see I've got this big thing, display of Arrow. I've got Superman. I get a lot um, of comic books. Um, I kind of, my husband's a big old comic book geek. We have a whole room in our house that is like climate controlled for his comic books. Um, mm -hmm. It was kind of something we bonded over. I, I think the the great thing is you can get a lot of storytelling when you have to do it in 22 pages. You learn a lot about yeah. storytelling, about pacing, about what's important to a story. And comic books really taught me that. Uh, growing up, I read a whole lot of X-Men, but I think my favorite, I love um, Neil Gaiman, Sandman, and uh, Fable. He's, he's my favorite. He's my favorite. Awesome. Um, Kristen has a great question. Uh, can you tell us anything about a character from Adore that we don't already know? Maybe something from your notes that didn't quite make it into the book. Hmm. Oh my gosh. From one of the main characters? And she's not, so. she's not there. You, you don't know that. Um. <laughs> Let me hang on. Let me ask that. I don't know. <laughs> I think she means one of the main characters, I would assume. Um, something that didn't make it. Uh, I don't know. I think Mitch is probably a little, um, gosh, that didn't make it in. That's a really good question and one I'm not prepared for. Um, You're like, how could I remember that? <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> um, Laurel comes from a, a large family. But it's a broken, it's a very broken family. So I guess mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of her backstory didn't make it in. I talked a lot about it in her brother's book, which was Cherished, which was the novella beforehand. But right. I kind of envision Laurel being very, um, very studious and shy. You don't see that now. She's very much a, a, a woman. But as a child, yeah. she, she would have been. Um, she wasn't. She was one of the middle children. She would have been one of the people who had to really help hold together her family. Oh, okay. That's an interesting dynamic. And Mitch introduces Laurel to, like, the BDSM world, right? No, actually, so, it's introduced from... Is well, she already in it? It's, it's sort of... Um, <laughs> that was a lovely sound I made. She, um, she, <laughs> reads a lot. she actually comes into it through uh, her sister-in-law's books. Because, again, going back uh -huh. to church, her brother marries an erotic romance author. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where she gets very interested in the lifestyle. And so she actually tries to go off and find someplace, some other club. Her brother's like, mm -hmm. no, and brings her to Sanctum, where he just begs that she doesn't go on the same night he does. Right. <laughs> that's that would be awkward. So... <laughs> So, and then we have Mitch, who's kind of like a damaged hero. He has a, kind of has a, you know, a, a past. So how does that past kind of shape his character? Um, he's the little boy lost. He's the mm -hmm. little boy whose dad didn't want him, although there's always another sto side of the story, and he doesn't necessarily get that until he learns a lot about his father in this book. 
Um, but his yeah. perspective as a child is that no one wanted him. He, um, his father and mother had an affair while the dad was married, and he was shipped off with the mom and rarely, rarely ever saw the dad again. So he didn't have any kind of, of real stable background. His mother went through a lot of boyfriends, a lot of husbands, finally ships him off to high school. He finds a girl he really cares about, and she dies in a car accident. Mm -hmm. um, he ends up marrying for logical reasons. She cheats on him with her his best friend and takes his law firm away from him. He marries again, Gosh. and that is all. So this is a man who's walking in. He feels like he is a walking, talking disaster area and not good for anybody. And what he's got to mm -hmm. realize is what Laurel has to realize is that what he really needs above all, more than her being sexy, more than her being sassy, is her being patient. Yes. In connecting with his... They, they get into a situation, because I've already said that it's a secret baby book. They get into a situation where, yeah. and I think without this, they probably don't stay together. They don't get together. So the universe works in mysterious ways, but they get in a situation where she realizes she can't walk away. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I love that dynamic. Um, Marley has a question about your past. Speaking of pasts. Oh, no. <laughs> do you remember? Do it. No, it's not bad. <laughs> Do you remember the first romance themed novel you read? Romance oh, absolutely. Novel? Absolutely. Sky O'Malley <laughs> by Bertrice Small. I was 14, oh, great. I would say. Probably why I, you know, I'm sure other people read like Sweet Harlequin or, but I, no, I got thrown in because I thought the cover was really pretty and my mom had this china hutch and she would keep all her books underneath. I would go through because I was a weirdo. <laughs> And I would read all the blurbs of these books, and it was pretty, and it looked neat, and so I took it one night, and <laughs> let me tell you, it was different from Charlotte's Web, but I was kind of <laughs> yeah. hooked. I was kind of hooked on it. Was, it's a, it's a big, it's a bodice ripper. It's a true bodice ripper. I mean, she gets that ripped off by numerous men. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I fell in love with the drama and the emotion, and and what it brought out in me. So that was absolutely my first. Mm -hmm. Adored is, you know, a really sexy tale, but it's also full of suspense. So uh, without giving away too much, what's your favorite suspense scene in Adored? Do you have one? My favorite suspense theme? Like um, a scene or... Oh, yeah. scene. Um, I, I probably love the very end of the book because I love the twisty turning. I love that yeah. moment when you realize that... Everything you thought is wrong. I like to play a yeah, lot with absolutely. point of view and, and perception. Just because a character tells you something, that doesn't mean that it's true. Just because a character, you know, a, a hero's instinct is one thing. Yeah, he cannot be very instinctive about certain things. And I love that moment where you realize everything I thought was true is wrong and oh no. Hmm. Now somebody's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> now, I was looking at your Facebook page, and I saw lots of Matthew McConaughey, so I'm just curious. Your celeb crush? My Actually, my celeb crush is Stephen Amell. I, I'm madly, totally, passionately in love with Stephen Amell, who's way too young for me and, and far too fit. Uh, the Matthew McConaughey oh. stuff right now is I'm writing a book called Master No, which is the ninth Masters and Mercenaries book and the character is named Tennessee Smith and he's utterly and completely based on Matthew McConaughey from his looks right down to the way he talks that's darling. Amazing. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I was gonna I was my next question was if you could choose one character of yours from Matthew to play, who would it be? But it now be, we know. That true. is amazing. <laughs> Why did you pick Matthew? You just like the Southern um, Charms. You know, he, uh, Tennessee Smith actually showed up back in book five. He kind of walks okay. in, and he's the CIA. He, at the time, he is McKay Taggart, which is the security firm. He's their CIA contact. Uh, he used to be Ian's uh, CIA, Ian Taggart's CIA handler, and they worked together. 
But I loved him walking in as this cowboy, this laid back. You will, don't look at me, honey. I have nothing to look at, but I'll take care of you. But he doesn't he <laughs> look like he's dangerous. He looks like a cowboy, Lothario. And Ian right. looks and he's like, honey, that man could kill you six ways from Sunday. Think of him as a very charming Dexter. And that just screamed Matthew McConaughey to me. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. Um, Alina just popped in and asked a question. She says, what other secondary characters do you think you'll write novellas for in the future? Um, I actually uh, I introduced some characters. I think the next, char- the next secondary characters in this series that I'll do are um, Lisa, who is um, Laurel's sister. She is going to meet up with the bodyguard from this series. His name is Remy. Um, he's the one who Remy ends up kind of talking sense to both of them. Um, right. But very, very Cajun, very hot, very ex-military. And he's going to run up against Lisa, who's this little pixie of a girl who, you know, she's just so cute and sweet and stubborn as hell. Um, the other characters I'll probably write about, there was um, Bridget from Cherished had a sister named Amy who I'll, I'll write about, and I'll probably write about Flynn, who is Mitch's brother. There you there have it, Alina. There are tons and tons of characters to write about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't know how you keep it straight. Do you keep, like, a journal when you're... I, I keep what we call a Bible. A Bible. I don't actually keep it. <laughs> it is. It is, and I love it because in the character section, I have it somewhere. In the character section, the, the there's like 20 pages worth of characters and notes on them, and the people in, who are read are dead. And I realize as I'm flipping through, I kill so many people. That's really sad. <laughs> I kill a lot of people. It keeps it exciting. You never know what's gonna happen, right? My body count is. Um, <laughs> Now, out of all your books, what do you think was the most exciting book to write? Um, you know what? I'll, I'll say the most exciting book for me to write was one of my, the first urban fantasy. I wrote a book called Steal the Light. <laughs> it was the most exciting one to write for a very personal reason. I wrote b- before, the, there's like a before I had my third child and an after I had my third child. Before I wrote my third child, I had written three books in ten years. And I'd been lackadaisical wow. about it and, and kind of I would send them in and then I wouldn't and I hadn't even joined RWA. It was it, I yeah. I wasn't very serious about it. Um born into it. After I had my third child, um I sat down and I wrote Steal the Light in probably three to four weeks. I wrote hmm. all five uh, thieves books in the course of nine months and so wow. it was like the beginning of me suddenly this is my life and I'm going to be serious about it and I'm going to do this so writing that first couple of sentences of steal the light they were very revelatory it was very yeah. much okay I'm going to do this what do you think changed? What changed in you? You think you were just like this? Oh, is, anybody who's read know, the book on Steal the Light knows this story. I had a very rough birth, and and I I almost died. Wow. Um, <gasps> wow. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of women go through this, but I was yeah. thirty-seven at the time, and I just decided that it was long enough, and I was gonna, I was yeah. going to, I was going to be a different person, and I was yeah. going to go after what I wanted. Oh, that's amazing. And we are so happy that you're writing so much. It's awesome. Um, ooh, we have two new questions from someone who just came in. Um, Sherry Clark says, oh. does Lisa get an opera? <laughs> Do you know who that is? I know a lot of these names <laughs> coming in. I knew Alina, too. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so she says, does Lisa get an opportunity for a novella? Yes. I believe Lisa will probably before. be next. Mm-hmm. And she also says, you mentioned that you really enjoyed that cover of your first red romance book. Do you have a favorite cover of yours that you think is shiny, too? I love all of them. They're so pretty. But I probably, my eyes popped out of my head when I got the Dungeon Royale cover back. It's it's really beautiful. He is a lovely man. 
Um, no. Yes. <laughs> Uh, on the other side, though, I really um, of of not just hot guys. I really love the the new uh, the new uh, Hunter covers, uh, especially the mm-hmm. September book coming out is called Addict, and it's just uh, it's so beautiful. Now, in terms of recommending a book to someone who's never read your work before, what book would you recommend for a newbie to read first? You know, it would depend on what they like. Almost everything of mine has an element of eroticism to it. The, the characters are going to are going to have sex, and it's going to the bedroom door is going to be open. Um, but there are different. You know, if you if you like urban fantasy and paranormal, I would tell you to start with Steal the Light. If you like contemporary, I would tell you to read um, the Dom Who Loved Me. I tend to write uh, very serially. Of the stories yeah. built on each other. You can pick up any one of my books and understand the story, but I think they're much, much better read in order. Mm-hmm. And if you You're like right. you s- many, many men and one woman, pick up any of the masters. <laughs> yes, and you are set to go. You, right. So you write a lot of different types of um, different types of things. What was your background before you started writing? What did you do? I was a housewife. I raised uh, I raised two kids. Um, before that, I would I I have a degree in English, which was I always like to joke about that. Like I got a degree in a language I speak. It, it was good. Me too. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wrote a lot of I wrote plays when I was younger. Shockingly yeah, enough, me. it doesn't pay very much. Um, okay. The comic books didn't pay very much. I've written just about anything you can possibly write, but I. I awesome written screenplays. I've written all of it. I, I love the experience of writing a novel. Yeah. I was also reading about a fundraising initiative that you started this year, um, and you contributed a story for it called Luscious to Sweet oh, yeah. Seduction. Yeah, no, that was not me that? starting it. That's Brenda Novak. <laughs> that's 100%. Oh, the, ch- the charity. Yeah. Yes, the absolutely amazing Brenda Novak. Uh, I was asked to submit a novella and so, of course, and you know, she was like, "Give me twenty-five thousand words." I can't say hello in twenty-five thousand words, so I gave her <laughs> almost seventy. Um, but it's awesome. the first story in Sweet Seduction, which is on sale now. It's thirteen. It's a whole lot of really awesome. great stories for the cause of diabetes research. Excellent. Um, Sherry Clark just said thank you and waving back. I missed that one. She's in New Zealand. How cute. <laughs> awesome. Oh, she really asked, she asked oh, another. Really late. <laughs> um, Lexi has a question. If you had to trade places with one of your characters and adored, who would it be and why did you choose them? It's actually two questions, but. If I had to trade places, and pretty much everybody shows up and adored, um, I would totally trade yeah. places with Charlotte Taggart. <laughs> I kind of have a thing for <laughs> Ian. I really do. I don't know if anybody can tell, but um, I, yeah. I kind of like oh, Charlotte's whole life. Not the mm-hmm. like Absolutely. bad parts. So can I? I want to. I want to like. I want to trade places with her after all the horrible stuff happens. Yeah. <laughs> Alina said, "We love Ian, so sure." And she said, "Smiley face." I love when people pop in. Sherry just said, "What is your favorite dessert that Macon made?" Um, Megan makes a couple of things. And this is in Luscious. He's a pastry chef. Um, so he makes a lot of, there's a chocolate icebox pie that he makes that's mm. probably my favorite thing. Oh, that sounds delicious. It's really, really, really good. Incorporating food and sex together, what could be better? Hey, I've done a lot of chefs because there's nothing sexier than a guy who can cook. My husband, I love my husband. If there's one thing I could change about him, he would be able to cook. He makes grilled cheese. <laughs> hey, that's that's a comfort food. It's the yes. best. So Kate says, if you could turn one of your books into a TV series, which one do you think you'd choose and why? I'd choose Thieves and a Heart. Very, very fun. Yeah, I would choose Thieves because I, I would just... It's the same characters. I actually think it would be easier to turn into... Um, instead of change, you have to change couples every time. Um, it's the same characters over five books, and I've just always dreamed of seeing it. 
up there. Mm-hmm. Those are like the books of my heart. So I, I'm, I always kind of gravitate back towards that. Absolutely. Um, Felicity wants to know, what advice would you give someone who wants to write a romantic novel but is timid about the romance scenes? I'm intrigued. Um, well, here's the great news. There are all <laughs> kinds of romance novels. Everything from absolutely no sex whatsoever, the couples don't even kiss, to dear God, what did I do with the loop? I mean, it, it runs the whole gamut. <laughs> The great thing about publishing today is that there's kind of a place for every every type of book. So I would say if you're not comfortable with writing hardcore, you know, hard, you know, sex scenes, don't. Find your don't comfort level. Find what what speaks to you because it's just going to feel uncomfortable if you're if you can't if you're giggling or you can't like write the words or you don't. I I wrote what I like to read. For me. Yeah. Um, what what I the thing I missed and I like to write say what I write what I write are are either supernatural thrillers or regular thrillers with a lot of romance and a lot of sex. That's what I like mm-hmm. to read. So I would right. say figure out what you like to read and write that. Yeah, no, that's great great advice. I feel like anything you cringe at, you wouldn't want. to Yeah, read. <laughs> don't feel like, like no. just because. Um, I know a lot of people tell you. Write what's hot, what and what I'm saying yeah. what sells well. But listen, what what sells well today will be out of style tomorrow, and it will come back okay. two years from now. Find what you like, find what you truly feel like you do well, master that art, and stick with it. I don't yeah. think chasing um, trends ever really serves anybody well. No, definitely not. Um. Now, Chase has a great question. Do you find that women and men read your novels? Do you have any I'm male I'm surprised at how fans? many men read my novels. Um, I get a lot of couples. I don't have a lot of single oh, men, but I guess because of the thriller aspect of it and the action aspect of it, some women can get their husbands to read me where they might not be able to um, you know, read something that didn't have those kind of more traditionally masculine aspects to it. But um, I get I have a lot of couples who read who read my books and I, I think that is the coolest thing in the world. That's awesome. Do they gravitate toward any certain books or just oh, no, the those whole gamut? Men men read Masters of Mercenaries. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They like That's they awesome. tend to like the spy stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, now we're coming to our last question. It's gone by so fast. <laughs> now, in case anyone just came in and, and missed what we were kind of talking about, the stuff that you're working on currently, what are you working on next, just so we, we know what to look forward to? Well, I'm working on, uh, I guess I'm kind of working on two things. I'm working on the very last finishing touches of Scandal Never Sleeps, excuse me, which is coming out August 18th. Um, from It's a my first Berkeley book. It's Shayla Black and I. It is what I'd like to call... Um, Empire and Scandal meets an erotic romance. So it's Ooh, a lot of exciting. nighttime soapy, scandally goodness, but with fully open bedroom doors. Awesome. Um, and then the I'm working on my August 4th book, which is Master No, which is book nine in Masters and Mercenaries. Mm-hmm. So you guys heard it here. So exciting. You have awesome stuff coming up. And we are just thrilled to talk to you today. And it was it was a great time. Thank you so much for joining us for having me. I had a lovely time as always. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Bye. See you guys later. Bye.